Many weapons in TF2 change the way a class is played. Some, like the Huntsman, change a class's position and effect on the front line. Others, like the Tomislav, allow for a class to be more mobile and allow them to react to enemies faster. These weapons provide some kind of situational upside in exchange for another de balancing downside. The Huntsman is not a hit scan weapon, but it charges faster and doesn't lock you into a scope, and the Tomislav fires less often than the minigun but has very concentrated shots and a faster rev time, one of which is also silent. However, there are a few weapons that warp the play style of a class, essentially taking away an essential element of the class in exchange for something potentially more powerful. A perfect example of this concept is the direct hit, taking away the comfort of splash damage in exchange for great power and the ability to wipe away light classes in a single shot. But there are others, and one of those is quite disliked by those within the TF2 community, and one that I am pretty fond of. The Flog, also known as the Phlogistonator, is just like the direct hit conceptually, taking away an integral part of a class in exchange for great power. And in this case, the Flog takes away a mechanic that changes how Pyro can be played. But what does Pyro gain? What could make the loss of deflecting crits worthwhile? Well, uh, um, your own crits. A lot of crits. After accumulating 300 fire damage with any weapon, your oomph meter will be filled, and by right-clicking or taunting, you will enter a state of invulnerability. The reason why I don't simply just say a state of uber is because you aren't just given uber charge when taunting. Pyro, when using oomph, will receive knockback, resistance, uber, and crits. By the way, uh, it's possible that you can cancel this taunt and obtain two seconds of knockback immunity, uber, and two more seconds of crits, but let's not talk about that right now. But you can get the gist of it though. Pyro exchanges air blast for the ability to churn through enemies at an incredibly fast rate, just like the direct hit. Many hate the weapon, and few even bear its existence. Many say it's overpowered, and many say that it just straight up sucks. However, most of the hate that the weapon gets is a byproduct of what weapon is most often used along with it, the Scorch Shot. But that isn't all that important for right now. There are countless videos out there specifically made to tell you that the Scorch Shot is overpowered, which it probably is, but the Flog gets all the hate. Using the Flog teaches you some pretty important lessons about Pyro as a class in terms of range and how fire particles negatively affect medic healing. Speaking of medics, the Flog is actually a pretty good counter to the Vaccinator, seeing as the particles of the Flamethrower prevent the healing that it gives and the resistance effects that it distributes from fully functioning correctly. And yet, even though the Flog can deal such immense damage, pirates that use the Flog can easily be stopped by all kinds of damage sources that Air Blast can deal with. Rockets and stickies make a Flog's life a grueling experience when you have no way of sending them back or protecting yourself. A weapon where great power and damage come at a cost of an integral mechanic of the class being lost. Soldier with his direct hit losing splash damage, and Pyro with the Flog losing air blast. However, there is one weapon that takes away something so integral that it essentially changes what the class is designed to do. However, I don't think it removes something, it just emphasizes what the class was designed to do in the first place. Meet the Sydney Sleeper. The Sydney Sleeper is a sniper rifle for the sniper, one of which that follows the same design philosophy as the direct hit and the flog, in the fact that it loses out on an aspect of the class in exchange for higher damage. But the Sydney Sleeper doesn't directly alter your damage, but rather it alters your DPS, or damage per second. Let's do the obligatory stat breakdown before I start talking about the UTI-inator. The Sydney Sleeper has a 25% faster charge rate than stock, and on a scooped hit, it will apply Jurati for 2 to 5 seconds based on the charge level and has no random crits. This weapon cannot get headshots. However, the Sydney Sleeper has a unique additional stat called Nature's Call, 
which, when hitting scoped headshots, will always mini crit and reduce the remaining cooldown of Jurati by one second. So when the weapon description says that this weapon cannot headshot, it's about 265% incorrect. 265% is the difference between a full crit and a mini crit. M mathematically, at least. Also, an unwritten stat of the Sydney Sleeper is that you can extinguish your teammates with an unscoped shot. Now, with the obligatory stat breakdown out of the way, allow me to explain how the Sydney Sleeper compares to the stock rifle. The big difference between the stock rifle and the Sydney Sleeper is the fact that it can't headshot, which usually is the deterring factor of the weapon. Sniper mains here can't headshot and they lose their minds. They drop it and say it's the worst sniper rifle in the game, or even the worst weapon in the game. The worst sniper rifle is the classic, but I can see why sniper mains dislike this attribute. However, when used correctly, this thing is a beast. The faster charge rate on the Sydney Sleeper gives the sniper an extreme yes, boost to his speed when in combat, constantly putting out 150 damage on body shots that also applies to Roddy onto whomever is hit. And remember, the Sydney Sleeper can still technically headshot, now it's just a mini crit. These mini crit headshots deal a max of 203 damage, which is still enough to kill any class other than a heavy in one shot. Lest, of course, they are fully overhealed. This is where this weapon truly does begin to struggle against overhealed opponents, at least overhealed medium health class opponents. This weapon cannot instantly kill them, unlike the stock sniper rifle. However, it leaves them severely weakened and very easy to take care of or your team now that they have taken a very large chunk of damage and are covered in Jurati. It's especially useful when firing on one singular target, for example, a pocketed heavy or soldier, though you won't be able to take them out with one shot. Let's say, for example, the heavy's being pocketed by a vaccinator medic, an incredibly powerful combo. Though the resistance prevents them from taking critical damage from the source of which they are resisting, mini crits are also included. However, they will be taking mini crit damage from any source, so their structural integrity is now severely crippled by forcing the medic to either back away and lose the ability to heal his target, or for them both to back up and wait for the Jurati's effect to end. Now, on a fully charged shot, the Jurati lasts 5 seconds. But with healing from a medibeam or a dispenser, that duration is about half of what it would have been normally. However, this is still enough time for you and your team to shred through the health of the heavy and the vaccinator medic. The Sydney Sleeper seems to be a pretty good weapon to take out vaccinator medics in their pockets with, because it constantly is applying them with a debuff, where they are constantly taking extra damage from every source in the game. A medic can use three resistances at once, but that leaves them with barely anything left, making them pretty darn easy for you to target down along with your team. Another great attribute of this weapon specifically is its ability to counter snipe. Yes, it actually can be pretty good at counter sniping. Usually, sniper duels come down to who can quickscope who first, but sometimes people will fully charge their shots or partially charge their shots just to hit a body shot and get a pretty darn easy kill which is a lot safer than attempting to peek the sightline without having a full charge. They can still one-shot you with a headshot, but you can one-shot them with a body shot, which is going to take way less accuracy and just slightly more time to perform. And besides, slowly peeking at the sightline should be pretty safe so long as you don't reveal yourself prematurely. Something that I have noticed about the Sydney Sleeper, however, is its lack of noise. This isn't an attribute specifically listed in the stats, nor do I think it's an attribute that was intended, but seeing as the Sydney Sleeper actually fires out darts rather than regular bullets that the sniper rifle does, the sound that the Sydney Sleeper makes appears to be much quieter than the regular sniper rifle, and they begin to blend in more with the environment and the noise pollution of your average Team Fortress 2 game rather than a sniper rifle's headshots do, making it more difficult to identify where the shot came from and who was shooting it. The faster charging of the Sydney Sleeper seriously does put you at an edge of the enemy snipers, especially those who main the Razorback, seeing as they can't obtain a new overheal. Snipers still die in one shot to the Sydney Sleeper. All light classes do, to be fair, but when fighting another sniper, they are either occupied with scoping down another opponent or attempting to look at you. You only need to hit them with a body shot. They have to hit you with a body shot as well, or a headshot. 
with the Sydney Sleeper, you don't need to hit a headshot to take care of enemy snipers. All you need is a body shot, seeing as your charge time is reduced to a point where you can outspeed other snipers in their charging. Speed is the name of the game with the Sydney Sleeper. By taking away the ability to headshot, you are removing snipers' capability of taking care of any enemy in the game in one shot. The range doesn't change, but the speed now does, and so does your power. You've exchanged your power for speed, and the ability to support your team by applying Jurati for a, from a vastly different range than that of which you can distribute it with the normal Jurati. This speed also allows you to deal 150 damage or potentially more damage to a multitude of different enemies in a shorter period of time than you could with stock, seeing as stock requires you to hit headshots or wait to charge body shots, where the Sydney Sleeper shortens the charge and makes it easier on the sniper when attempting to hit his shots. Like I said before, this speed increase does make sniper 1v1s a little simpler. You can no longer shoot them simply with an uncharged headshot, but they still can do it with you. The speed of the charge gives you just enough of an advantage against the enemy sniper, so long as you don't get caught with your pants down by the enemy sniper. The biggest weakness of the Sydney Sleeper has been staring us in the face this whole time, and that would be the same reason why sniper mains dislike the weapon in the first place. I've kind of been dancing around it, trying to make it seem as if it's not really a problem, but this is a big problem, and the benefits I'm talking about might not outweigh this downside in the end. These two words leave this weapon in a pretty bad position in certain situations. No headshots. Without being able to hit critical headshots, fully overhealed heavies now take about three fully charged headshots for the Sydney Sleeper to kill. Using the SMG in conjunction with the Jurati effect on hit is a great idea, but stock will just outright kill the heavy in one shot, along with every other class in the game. Just as a quick reminder. When you think about it, overheal in general does weaken the effects of the Sydney Sleeper as a whole. 203 damage just isn't enough against overhealed opponents, and the length of Jurati is cut in half as a result of the healing from the medic's medigun. So with all this in mind relating to how the Sydney Sleeper works, let me tell you something that might get me into a bit of hot water with some people. The Sydney Sleeper is a rifle that closely resembles what Sniper was made to do in the first place. Yeah, you heard me right. I believe that the Sydney Sleeper's design accentuates what Sniper as a class is supposed to be, a support class. The Sydney Sleeper, based on its stats and the ability to distribute Jurati, is a support weapon. Similar to the Natasha in certain aspects, this weapon cripples the structure of the enemy team, leaving many on low health and afflicting prime targets with 5 full seconds of Jurati at any range the sniper chooses. Most of the time, when an enemy is under the effects of Jurati, many will focus on one player seeing as they now are taking 33% more damage from all sources. This is Sniper giving his team an opening an opening to puncture an enemy team's frontline, or to cripple a defensive hold. This is, in my eyes, what Sniper is meant to be, not a class able to deal 150 damage within fractions of a second to enemies at any range, without needing to put forth much commitment in the shots that he takes. The Sydney Sleeper also encourages the use of your secondary weapon, that being your Jurati, or, in my opinion, more specifically, your SMG. Though the Sydney Sleeper can decrease the recharge time for your Jurati, using the Jurati effect on hit, in conjunction with a flurry from your SMG, can take care of targets that are just a little too healthy for your Sydney Sleeper to take out in one shot. For example, heavies. And just like that, we see another weapon following a wonderfully diverse weapon concept. Many sniper mains just toss this weapon in the same category as the classic and return to their meta options. Of, well, any other sniper rifle. <laughs> but the Sydney Sleeper changes things. Not too drastically to be a subclass, but just enough to alter how you play. Taking away headshots from the sniper does force him to be the support class he is meant to be. I have begun to enjoy weapon concepts like this a lot more as of recently. The Direct Hit, Flog, and Sydney Sleeper all take away something so important to a class that many would be left scratching their heads if they were told that a sniper couldn't headshot. 
but somehow they work out, ending up with a balanced and fun to use weapon that adds a lot of risk for a lot of rewards. Also, sniper mains actually get really, really angry when you continue to nail them with fully charged shots from the Sydney Sleeper, and I can completely understand why, but you know, it's still fun. Anyways, uh, see you later. Bye-bye!